Welcome to Pharma Drama, the channel where we look at the science of healthcare and healthcare products. In this video, I thought we'd have a quick recap of crystalline materials, what they are, the key concepts that you need to know to understand them, and we'll have a look at a question from a previous exam paper. So, if that sounds good to you, get yourself a drink. I've got coffee as ever, and let's make a start. First things first, crystallinity means all the molecules in our material are arranged in a repeating pattern. It really is as simple as that. Every molecule lines up next to its neighbour in exactly the same orientation. Now, we need a way of defining what the pattern is, and we don't do that by writing down the position of every molecule, because there are trillions and trillions of molecules in even the smallest crystal. So we need a way of defining what the pattern is. And the way we do that is with a unit cell. So let's start there. The unit cell is the smallest number of molecules that we can look at that allows us to see the pattern by which they arrange next to each other. And that pattern then repeats in three directions, X, Y, and Z. So a good way of answering a question such as define a crystalline material in an exam would be to say, in a crystalline material, all the molecules are arranged in a repeating pattern, and the smallest repeat unit is called the unit cell. The next thing to remember is that some materials can arrange themselves in more than one unit cell, and we call those materials polymorphic. So, let's look next at polymorphism. When a material is polymorphic, it means the molecules can arrange with more than one type of unit cell. Knowing how the molecules pack together in the unit cell is very important because it affects all of the physico-chemical properties of our crystal. Let me give you an example with my favorite prop, Lego bricks. Imagine that each one of these Lego bricks is a molecule and we pack them together such that this is our unit cell. This arrangement repeats in three dimensions to build up our crystalline structure. I hope you can see that the molecules are not very closely packed together. And it's quite easy to remove one of these molecules with a small amount of force. If on the other hand, we were to pack the molecules together like this, now I hope you can see they look as though they're much more tightly packed together and it's much harder to remove a molecule. If therefore we were to measure the melting points of these two polymorphic forms, the melting point of this form is going to be quite high and the melting point of this form is going to be quite low because it's a lot easier to break the molecules apart from this polymorphic form. <laughs> See, <laughs> just like that. Now, this is important and it's important because when we melt a material, we have to break molecules away from the crystalline lattice. The higher the energy holding the molecules together, the higher the melting temperature. So I hope you can see that if we have more than one unit cell, therefore the material is polymorphic, we're going to have crystals with a range of melting points. The higher the melting point, the more stable the crystalline form. And that's important. And the reason it's important is because when we give a medicine to a patient, it's going to be in a crystalline form usually, we want the drug to dissolve. To dissolve a drug in water, we need the molecules in the crystal to break away from each other and then go and dissolve in water. And that's no different from the process of melting, is it? So if you think about it, the crystalline form with the highest melting temperature is also going to be the slowest dissolving form because it's the one where it's the hardest to pull the molecules off the crystalline lattice. So it's really important if we have a drug which has polymorphic forms, we know what those polymorphic forms are, we measure the melting points of those polymorphic forms, and we recognize the higher the melting point, the lower the bioavailability is going to be if we use it in a medicine, because the higher melting point one is going to dissolve the slowest. So that is why polymorphic form is very important in medicines. There's one more concept which is kind of important and that is habit. And it'll be a good habit to get into to know what that means. So let's look at that next. Habit is a concept that I think students often misunderstand. It means 
What is the shape of the macroscopic crystal that we see with our eyes? It's as simple as that. <laughs> it just means what shape is our crystal? The crystal could be, for instance, needle shaped or a cubic. It doesn't matter. It's just when we look at the crystal, what shape do we see? I don't really understand why some students find that concept difficult, but I think it's because most students think that the unit cell is related to the final habit. In other words, if the unit cell is cubic, it means that the final shape of our crystal is also going to be cubic. And that simply isn't the case. The molecules are really, really small, and there are trillions and trillions of them in even the smallest crystal. And therefore, what shape we observe the crystal to be is not really related to how the molecules pack together. Now, I've been trying to think of a good analogy that might make it a bit simpler for you. And the best one I can think of is imagine we are building a car park and it's a multi-story car park. So we have lots of layers and we are parking cars in the car park. And for argument's sake, let's imagine each car is exactly the same and every parking space in our car park is aligned with its near neighbor exactly the same. Then it becomes like a crystalline material. Every car we park in the car park is essentially a molecule in our crystalline structure. Then imagine that we were looking at the car park from outer space with a satellite. The car park could be absolutely massive because it contains trillions and trillions of cars. And I hope you can see that we could choose to make the car park really long and thin, or we might choose to make it square. We might choose to make it like a pyramid. It doesn't really matter. The shape of the car park that we see from outer space is the habit because it's the shape of the car park that we're seeing with our eyes. But it doesn't matter whether the car park is cubic or a pyramid shape or a needle shape. If we were to look at how the cars are parked next to each other, they're all parked the same because the car is very small and the crystal is very big. So to sum that up, habit is the shape of the crystal that we see with our eyes and the unit cell is how each molecule is arranged next to each other. But molecules are very small and crystals are very big. Hopefully that made sense. I understood it, uh, but I need you to understand it. So that'd be good. Right, I think the best thing to do now, because those are the key concepts that you need in order to be able to answer exam questions, is to look at an exam question. So here is an exam question from last year. The question's in two parts. The first part reads, what does it mean when a drug is said to be polymorphic? Hopefully, you now understand how you might go about answering that question. You could say something like, polymorphism relates to crystalline materials. A crystalline material is one where the molecules are arranged in a repeating pattern. We define that pattern with a unit cell. If molecules can arrange in more than one pattern, i.e. there's more than one unit cell, then the material is said to be polymorphic. Polymorphism is important because different polymorphs will have different physicochemical properties, and that's going to affect how those physical forms are going to react in the body. Okay, let's look at the second part of the question. The second part reads, Indomethacin has two polymorphic forms. The alpha form melts at 152 degrees centigrade and the beta form melts at 160 degrees centigrade. What does this tell you about the relative stabilities of these forms and how might their bioavailabilities be different? Again, I hope you can see from the discussion that we just had how you might go about answering this question. The first thing to say is which is the stable form and which is therefore the less stable form. The higher the melting temperature, the more stable the form. So in this instance, the beta form melts at 160 degrees centigrade, the alpha form melts at 152 degrees centigrade, therefore the beta form is the stable form. So you could say, based on the melting temperature of the two forms, the beta form is the stable form and the alpha form is the metastable form. Then you need to say something about what does that mean for bioavailability. So, the higher the melting temperature, the slower that physical form is going to dissolve in water. Remember, dissolving means breaking molecules off the crystal lattice to dissolve them in water. So you could say it's very likely that the dissolution rate of the beta form is going to be slower than the dissolution rate of the alpha form. Because the beta form dissolves more slowly, 
it's going to take longer to get into solution and therefore if formulated into a medicine the bioavailability of the beta form is going to be less than the bioavailability of the alpha form okay that's all that answer needs you might get slightly mistracked by the fact that you've given an exact example which is indomethacin and you might start wandering into indomethacin does this that and the other you don't need to it doesn't matter what the drug is the question is about the physical forms so the most important things to note in that answer are you've got two forms alpha and beta to look at the melting temperatures of those two forms rank them because the higher melting temperature form is going to be the most stable and then say the most stable form is going to dissolve more slowly and therefore it's going to have worse bioavailability and that really is all you need to know about crystalline materials from a revision point of view there's lots of things you can get involved in but really an exam question is asking for some pretty basic knowledge and that basic knowledge is going to be do you recognize that a crystalline material simply refers to a repeating pattern of molecules do you recognize that we define that pattern with a unit cell because we can't define the position of every molecule so we just pick a few and look at how that pattern repeats so unit cell is super important if the material can pack in different ways there'll be different unit cells and we say those materials are polymorphic different polymorphs have different physico-chemical properties there's a whole range of different properties density stability hygroscopicity it doesn't matter for this type of question in the exam really you simply need to know that the more stable the form the higher the melting temperature and the reason that's important is because to get a drug into solution you've got to break the crystal lattice apart higher melting temperature means stronger bonds between molecules and therefore it's harder to get the molecules into solution slower dissolution usually means less bioavailability okay so hope that helped hope you uh, do okay if a question like that comes up in an exam if you have any questions send me an email or leave a comment in the box below and while you're leaving comments in the box below don't forget to like the video or subscribe to my channel because it really helps the channel out otherwise thank you so much for watching good luck in the exam and i'll see you again soon